Um, yeah, I guess we should, you know, we should start, you know, start talking about, you know, the, the place of no words. Um, yes, yeah, so I've watched it, um, watched it the other weekend and I thought it was, you know, it was very, very different to what I was expecting. Um, you know, and as a, as a child of the 80s, I really appreciate it. You know, I sort of grew up on Legend, Fraggle Rock, Labyrinth. So I really, really enjoyed the, the fantasy elements um, of the film. You know, was that always something when you, when you initially sat down to write, did you always know that it was going to be this mix of real world and, and fantasy? I did, yeah. Yeah, and I, I too also, when I was younger, really loved um, all of Henson's work and um, Fraggle Rock and Labyrinth. And um, yeah, but I, I, I know what you mean too. I mean, the film I is, is not what people expect. Um, and I love that. Um, I think that, you know, having experienced this film with folks for the last like year and a half, um, that's been the most interesting thing. I think that there are some people that see the creatures and get an idea in their head that this is gonna be like an 80s, um, fantasy film, um, and it's not, and that's what I'm most proud of, really, you know, is making, um, this film that I feel like is really unique and really emotionally, um, challenging and powerful. Was it, as you were writing, was it fun to sort of try and tap into, you know, your inner child to sort of work out, like, how, how they would have seen the world in that situation? Yeah, completely. And also straight from kind of Bodhi's ex real experience and the fact that we're <laughs> surrounded by so many children, um, it's very easy to tap into um, the perspective of a child, you know? Um, so much of this um, was written just from my real direct experience as being a dad, you know? And um, watching the way my children's minds work and how they play and how they go from one thing to the next. So, and yeah, and, and then also my own kind of inner, uh, my own inner child and um, reminding myself uh, just kind of how liberated and how free I was in my thinking when I was a kid. Um, and I think that I try to really honor the, the, the way a, a kid's head works um, was the attempt there for sure. I mean, this isn't the first time that you know you've used your family uh, in one of your in one of your films. I know that you know you've used some of your some of your other children in the past. And you know, did you take lessons from that and and use them use them here? Yeah, totally. I mean, this if if you were to if you've had any experience in just uh, how films are traditionally made or have been on a traditional film set and then you came to what my set for my films, you'd be like, what is this? And um, and that came, yes, directly from making my second film, The End of Love, with my son Isaac, who was two, who's now 13. Um, and at the time, you know, uh, I really just developed a way to be able to maintain the feeling of real life as much as possible so that uh, we as characters could really inhabit time and space in a way that feels real and authentic. And yeah, and so by the time, you know, it came to make this film, I knew that I, I could do it and that um, I could get a performance out of a young person, <laughs> one of my children in a way that I knew it could work. Um, so yeah, I felt prepared this, this go around. And I mean, he, was he, was he three? Yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's a year older than, a year older than Aurora and just sort of wondering, you know, what, what you, how much of it was scripted and how much of it is just sort of free reign. Cause there are a few sequences in the film that feel like when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, I, I've seen that interaction, you know, myself with, with my child. Yeah. Um, there's, there, there's a lot of improv in the film, um, but so much of it is written too. And then so much, so many scenes are written and then there's a little improv around the things that are written. 
Um, but surprisingly, a lot of Bodhi's moments in the film are written and they just, they feel kind of fresh and in the moment. Um, Mark would do this really cool thing where he would um, sort of just tell Bodhi what to say. Like, all right, this is, oh, let's pretend we're in this situation. And like, what if you said to daddy, blah, blah, blah. And they would give him, feed him the line. And Bodhi would just kind of make it his own and do his own thing with it. And oftentimes when I watch his performance on screen, it does feel like I'm watching this like profound, masterful performance <laughs> when really he's just, you know, he's a little three-year-old guy with a big imagination. He's kind of diving into his imagination and, and he thought we were just making home movies. Um, he didn't really understand that it was a film, but he definitely really enjoyed his experiences. Like the, the um, candy that they, the candy forest that they um, walk into was real candy made specifically for the film and he was just like this is the best thing ever he still talks about it he was like do you remember when there was that forest and it was filled with candies I was like yeah I think the one that the one that sort of stuck out to me is when um you guys are talking about the the Milky Way and you know the the urine yeah. <laughs> yes yeah that is one straight through in the moment happening in real life. Was that the Uranus moment? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, and I lose my shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and now it's so funny because he'll say it all the time. There's a meditation that I listen to with the kids every night. And um, one of them is about, she talks about Uranus, this woman. <laughs> and still, Bert is like, Uranus. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, very funny. But um, yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite moments in the film, actually, too. I always laugh whenever I watch it because I was, I was, it was so inappropriate, my laughing. I, I just like got the giggles. I couldn't stop. And the fact that it was getting captured, I didn't realize that would end up in the film. But of course, those are the moments that are magic and then it ends up on the screen. Yeah, it's just a bit where obviously, you know, you guys are going, you know, it's the Milky Way. It's, like, it's not the Milky Way, it's Uranus. And yeah, you know, that again, it's, it's something, it's conversations that, you know, I have with, I have with my toddler all the time. So it does feel, <laughs> however, however scripted or orchestrated it was, it does feel, you know, completely genuine, which I think really helps, you know, with the with the film and, you know, the audience investing in it, so. Yeah. Great. Been, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of footage to edit through to sort of, you know, pick out these, these moments. Well, surprisingly not. I mean, that's the thing. It, we, we um, you know, we didn't shoot a lot. Um, we we actually shot like one, two, three takes tops. Um, just because the more that we would do repetition, um, the more it would start to lose that 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 spontaneous spark, that that real raw feeling to it. Um, the more we'd kind of run over things and become a little too refined. So you'd think this would be one of those things where you just let it roll and find it whereas this was really magic like okay here's what we're doing we're doing it a couple times and we have to go because we're literally like on the side of a mountain and it's freezing cold <laughs> and we don't have a crew so um yeah it was it was pretty pretty precise in that way I mean you mentioned um the Jim Henson company earlier on but uh you know they they worked on this film is that right they actually you know helped with some of the creatures so I'm guessing as a as someone that grew up, you know, loving these films, it must have been, you know, an absolute dream come true to, you know, see them bringing something from, you know, your brain into into being. Yeah, I still don't even, I still don't know if I've even fully processed that because that that's like a big bucket list thing for me. Um, like I was, I said earlier, I love all Henson's films. They were deeply like inspiring to me as a kid, and so yeah, to be sitting in the workshop. And the fact that they were willing to support a filmmaker like myself in a film that's, you know, relatively small in budget um, 
the fact that they wanted to come on and lend their expertise and give up and do the animatronics for these creatures was really amazing. And I mean, you guys also, you filmed, uh, you filmed in Wales, I mean, at the same time that you, know, you were working on a discovery of witches, you know, and guessing that meant, you know, some busy, busy time for you guys. Oh my God. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was so wild because, and I like, the only person who truly understands it is my driver, Dave. <laughs> so I had, I had the same drive on a discovery of witches for three years. And we still giggle about how we managed to pull that off because they were shooting, um, what's the area called again? Snowdonia. Snowdonia in Northern Wales. But that was like a six hour drive. And I was in every scene of a discovery of witches. It was the first season. And so we would wrap and I would pay Dave (laughs) to continue working for the weekend. And we did that like three or four weekends in a row. And so we would wrap a discovery of witches at like 6 p.m. and Dave and I would get in that car and we would drive straight to Snowdonia. We would both like, he would sleep over for the weekend and come and like drive people on set. And then I would see my son, Bodie. I'd bring Forrest, my baby, with me. So my baby was coming for these, and you know what that's like, having a kid in a car for six hours. And I'd just like, I'd be like leaning over, breastfeeding, putting on the wiggles, anything to keep him happy so we could keep getting there. Because by the time we would get there on Friday, it was 1 a.m. And then I'd have to be up to start shooting at six or seven in the morning and I'd shoot all day Saturday, shoot the majority of Sunday and then do basically the same thing, drive back and then shoot the whole week on a discovery of witches. And I did that for a month. And and honestly, I, I just don't even know how we pulled it off. It's just so funny. I can't even believe I'm in your film because I was working so much, Um, but we made it, we made it work and I was like longing to see my boy. I needed to be with Bodie. And at that point I'd never been away from him for an extended period of time. And, you know, five nights away was really significant. Um, so I was like, I'm, I'm dedicated. He's written me this great role. I'm, we're going to make this work. <laughs> and we did. Um, but, but I really give all my props to Dave my very committed driver who who just was in the trenches with me. Shout out, Dave. Dave, Matt, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> I think much like um, a film like, a, a you know, A Monster Calls, you know, this is a film that, you know, it, it deals with the kind of issues that a lot of families, you know, can relate to, but it sort of does it in a way that's accessible to, to both the parents and the children. Are you guys sort of hoping that, you know, families you know, we'll sit down together and watch this and they'll be able to have these conversations about, you know, these these experiences that that, that can and unfortunately do happen to people. Oh, Remember yeah. Helen? Talk about Helen, my friend, recently. Yeah. Had- uh, yeah, certainly. I hope so. That that definitely was the intention of making this for sure. And it's happened a lot. Um, Just recently, like three weeks ago when our friend Helen was at our house, she hadn't seen her until recently. And she was a mama of two. And she, when she was pregnant with her second child, she found out she had stage four breast cancer. Um, and she told, like, the, uh, for me, her reflection on the experience and on the film was more profound than any other, you know, reviews or anyone who just enjoyed the movie because she really lived and breathed that experience and was on a path thinking that she was going to have to say goodbye to her children and goodbye to her family. And, um, and watching the film for her, she, she said it was so deeply impactful and healing. And she just kept thanking Mark for um, portraying such a realistic um world surrounding what it's really like for a family to navigate cancer uh and I I just very moved by her words I thought it was beautiful and she said it was 
therapeutic watching it. Yeah, it was really, it's been really, really um, deeply, deeply fulfilling having kind of all these big emotional exchanges with people, uh, people who have just lost someone um, and have seen the film. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty profound, pretty awesome. I mean, and I think having, having the, you know, Brody B so young in it, sort of opens it up further because again you know, a monster calls you know he's he's sort of on the verge of being a being a teenager and things but you know this is it is a film that you know a lot younger children could watch I mean Aurora came in when I was part way through watching and you know she was she was just fascinated about seeing you know somebody that was sort of her age talking how she talked and she could understand it from that level where you know a lot of children's films you know the kids are, are much older and she doesn't quite she doesn't quite get it so it does it does sort of open it up you know these important conversations but you know from a much younger age you know she can sit and watch it and it's just you know oh look there's that boy saying this and doing that but you know she will obviously take in so you know the little sponges she will take in this on you know some capacity when she's older you know, will sort of mm -hmm. help her with things that's great yeah that's beautiful um i mean i guess my you know my next question would be sort of out outside of acting you know you Teresa, you have um, Zen, Zen Mama going on. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know you guys have just, you know, you've just released a book to, to accompany your, your blog. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's another passion of mine. Um, I started a wellness brand called Your Zen Life back in 2012 and then sort of evolved into Your Zen Mama once I had children and that just became my world. Um, so I, I do that with Sarah Wright Olson, who's also an actress and a mummy of three. And it's, oh it God. is definitely one of my passions. I'm currently um, videoing my pregnancy journey. So I'm 31 weeks pregnant now. Um, and it's, I love the community that we've created through Your Zen Mama. And it was through this platform that we were approached by a publisher in Australia to release a book. And I think at first we were both very nervous and we felt like we shouldn't move out of our lanes. Um, but then we looked at it as a beautiful opportunity to give back to this incredible community who have shared so much with us. We thought, let's just collate all these stories and everything we've, we've learned over the years and we have access to really inspiring, incredible people in, in the medical world and the natural birthing world and um, the conscious parenting world. So we thought we'd, we'd just sort of give it a go. And it was such a wonderful experience. And then the, the book has been so beautifully received um, that we're now in the process of um, fleshing out a second book, which is really exciting and uh, certainly not, a role I thought I would ever add to my resume. I never thought I would be an author. Um, but I, I find writing really therapeutic and beautiful. And I've actually opened the book up again recently to chapter eight, which is all about uh, birthing. So I'm reminding myself of all the things that I have to look forward to in the next couple of months. <laughs> it, it, it's the, um, it's not so much the, the pre-birth, stuff that no one tells you about it's the afterbirth stuff that no one tells you about that was um definitely a surprise for myself <laughs> yeah I was just writing um a post on this today that I don't I don't remember anyone telling me about like afterbirth pains when your uterus is coming back in when your newborn's nursing and you're having crazy pains that feel like you're back in labor again or night sweats lying in bed saturated in sweat because your hormones are dropping back down to a normal level and you're sweating it all out like there are so many things you just don't know about so we wanted to take all the things and put it in the book so it takes you through the whole um, gamut of experiences from wanting to get pregnant all the way through until you know you've got that little baby in your arms my uh, my last question for yourself would be you know you've recently uh, you've recently said goodbye to Diana and discovery of witches you know what was the what was that experience like it must be hard um after so many years yeah look I um 
I, I really made peace with it, to be honest. I think I got to be with her for three years. I had this amazing experience watching her on her journey and um, seeing the ways in which she evolves. Uh, it felt really neatly tied up the last season. And I think it just organically 